Welcome to the future of insights and analytics. Our facilitator is Elaine Boxer, and she's managing director for SC Ventures, a hybrid investment and consulting firm. She's also a graduate of the Wharton School of Business. Welcome, Elaine. Thank you, Gene. Hello. Good to have you. Now, in theme number two, unmet needs and desired state. Tell us what this means and what we're going to learn today. So in our first theme, we asked our experts what they're looking for in research capabilities in order to inform their decision making, in order to derive the insights that they need to make good strategic and marketing decisions. And in this theme, we pivot to say, okay, we now know what you're looking for. So what aren't you finding and where might some of your frustrations be? And more specifically, when you work with your internal insights and research team, what capabilities do you look for and what capabilities do they need to have in order to serve your needs? That's a great question. Tell us about the panelists that sat in on this conversation. So this is our same great panel from last time with a couple of new additions. We've made some optimization here. So we're glad to have Wendy on board. She's a CMO and a couple of other folks who've sort of come alive in this theme. We've had some good good comments on the board and also private messages. We've even had some comments offline that have enabled me to direct the conversation a little bit. So you'll be hearing some great stuff from Christine and from Anthony. And there have been some, some really good conversations this week with this crew. So in looking at your executive summary, Elaine, what are the things that they're looking for when it comes to research? So one of the ways in which we influence this conversation is we also ask them specifically, how does traditional market research play into your decision making at the launch of a product, launch of a campaign, launch of a new product development effort? They basically said that they use traditional market research to inform new products and new campaigns, obviously, but they did struggle with some limitations of that. There's always a tension between using research resources that really understand intimately the challenges of that company or that market or that brand versus tapping into folks who may not understand any of that context, but they bring an outsider's objectivity. I also heard about the tension between the value of human-driven insight versus automated and then there was also um, the trade-off between understanding the complete view of what's happening across channels versus getting a unified view of the customer. That was very, very hard to get. So in your key point number one, Elaine, you do talk about this launch uh, question and uh, when does research play a part? Tell me about this. In, in total, what I heard is that they apply this research at a few key junctures. And one of them is to reveal markets, segments, or products to pursue. And then once they get a sense for what markets and products they should be playing in, they again, they will use demographic or other research to understand those consumers' needs and competitive gaps of where they might specifically play within a market. And once they have something to bring to market, they'll use research to understand, well, how do we speak to that market? So they'll listen to the market and see how how the actual target customers are speaking and how do they inform their marketing materials to resonate with them. And fourth point is actually once it's in market, they're using it to measure campaigns for optimization. So I know in key point number two, you talk a little bit about the value of outside versus inside in terms of uh, teams to collect data and do the research. Walk us through this. So we asked this group, what are you looking for when you turn to your internal research team, your insights team in-house? What we heard is they appreciate their colleagues' ability to apply insights directly to the specific brand and market challenges that the company, everyone in the company knows that they're struggling with. But this advantage can actually become a disadvantage because familiarity and objectivity are often at odds. So Christine here says, you know, an internal capability she wants is the, the ability to tell a story and to vary it based on this audience and what is important to them. But on the flip side, she talks about how that very familiarity can bias the insights. Mm -hmm. Well, this is so important, and I know you're going to get into this more in theme number three, Elaine, but what are the perceived gaps and obstacles for them? So when you ask a group of leaders what they're looking for, inevitably they start talking about what they're missing. Some of the things that they cited are 
research is too expensive. Related to that is scalability. So they can they feel like they can carry out a small study, but being able to test a whole market or get a pool of data that's really sufficient, that's a challenge. Even accessing the data, that's a frustration. They struggle with whether this data is even specific to their problems and can they apply it. And classic problem of a large company is some of them complained that they don't really have a good view of what research has already been done, how to access it, that would maybe prevent rework. So they, they really struggle with, with all of these things. And I guess it's kind of funny because I know um, Anthony is more of a proponent of something scalable as opposed to having too much human interaction. Is that right? Well, he it's not that he's a proponent. It's just that he was the one who specifically called out how expensive it is and how unscalable it is to, to have to have a human being analyze everything. And so he sort of wished that if there were a way to automate away any human interaction in the, in, in the insights generation process, he would because it tends to be slow and expensive and not scalable. And actually, if you advance to the next slide, that is a great segue for our top three experts because you see Anthony's there in third place. And I have to say, what he lacked in quantity, he made up for in quality. And then our other two contributors here is Anvesha. She has a lot of experience in India and in Asia. She's got a great background with retail clients like Sephora and Gap and airline companies through Google. So her insight was very informed by those experiences. Christine, her comments were from the perspective of, okay, this is how it really happens in companies. This is what we really struggle with and what we're really thinking. And that's exactly the kind of insights we were hoping to to uncover from this panel. Elaine, great job. I can't wait to get into theme number three. Do you want to talk more about that or just wait till we get together again? Well, yeah, so theme number three, as I mentioned, we're going to be asking more specifically about what their frustrations are in tapping into traditional research solutions. And we're also going to flip the script a little bit and ask them now, you've talked about internal capabilities that you're looking for. What do you think you're looking for in external capabilities, which is of great interest to our clients? Can't wait for that. So great to talk to you. Great job presenting this material. It's so interesting. Elaine Boxer, she's managing director of SC Ventures. It's a hybrid investment and consulting firm. She's also a graduate of the Wharton School of Business. And Elaine, we will talk again. Look forward to it.